to the channel, my friends. Today, we're gonna be showing you some interesting customizable effects. So you'll be able to do this with any software that has an echo or trail effect and has masking. So that covers the majority, of course, the Adobe products, Final Cut, Sony Vegas. Now, I'm also gonna use the opportunity in this tutorial to talk about Rotoscope 2, which is in the new After Effects beta. So if you guys have your Creative Cloud subscription, you can go to the beta section and download this and be able to use the features in Rotoscope 2, which apparently uses new machine learning algorithm to be able to make things a lot faster. So I'm gonna do the masking section of this with Rotoscope 2, and then we're gonna hop into Adobe Premiere, and any of you guys can follow along. And I'm gonna show you all the crazy little variations I showed at the beginning. So if you guys enjoy, please leave a like, please subscribe for more content like this. As always, comment below what you'd like to see from me, and let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, so if you are gonna use the new Rotoscope 2 beta, fire up the beta version of After Effects. If you're just using After Effects to mask, you can still Rotoscope using the standard method, or of course, if you're using any other software, whatever method you use to mask, go ahead and do the mask your way. So go ahead and import your footage into your project bin here. And of course, anytime we start our rotoscope, you always wanna double click on the footage here so that you're not in a composition, you wanna be in the layer. Let's double click right here. If you guys are stuck on any of this, I have a full rotoscope step-by-step -step guide. That'll be in the description as well. But either way, now that we're in a layer here, we can select our rotoscope tool in the top left here. And we're just gonna make a little rough outline of our subject here just by left clicking and drawing like this. You'll see it's pretty messed up. We need to hold down Alt to subtract parts of the rotoscope. So I'm gonna go and do that. And you'll see it's starting to come together. So make sure you zoom in here and just keep doing this, holding down Alt. If you need to add something in, you just left click to drag it in. I also should mention here, over in the left in your effect controls, make sure your version is set to 2.0 instead of the classic if you are trying it in the beta. You also want to set your quality to best and then you can leave any of the other stuff at default. I like to add a little bit of a feather here. I want to go overboard with the feather at first. I would do your full rotoscope and then at the end I would go ahead and adjust the feather however you need. So let's put this up a tiny bit for now. So the example footage I'm using here is actually very complex. So this is a true test of what you can do with it. As you see there's a lot of the different colors which are blending in the background here. Now once you've got your first frame already carved out like this, all you need to do is click page down on your keyboard to move to the next frame and then make any adjustments as needed. So I'm just gonna move a few frames. If I see something starting to mess up, I'm gonna make the adjustment. And you'll see it's a lot more smooth, especially when it comes to tracking the hands. Um, there's some little issues as we go through here, but for the most part, I can tell that it's already better than the original version and that it's gonna be able to save a lot of time. I'm gonna make my little adjustments and I'm gonna go ahead and play this little montage here as I go frame by frame. So again, keep going frame by frame page down to go to the next one and keep making your adjustments as you go along. So once you guys have finished the adjustments on every frame, go ahead and follow along with me. You can use control alt in your mouse wheel to zoom in on this little gray bar. Make the gray bar the length of however long you want your composition to be. So just drag the end to the end of your clip, drag the beginning of the gray bar to the beginning of the clip. Once you've done that, go ahead and click the freeze button. This is now going to do all of the masking for you. So we'll hop back in when this is all finished processing. All right guys, so once the freeze has completed, let's click over to our composition here to actually see how this is working. And as you can tell, it's not perfect. You'll see the arm has some messed up areas here. And that's because we're working with a very complex background. Being able to get this result from the normal rotoscope one would have taken a lot more time I probably would have had a lot more mistakes. So I'm very happy with this. If I wanted to make any tiny adjustment, I could always just pop back into the layer here, unfreeze it, fix whatever I need to. But the effect that we're gonna be showing today doesn't actually require you to have the perfect mask, the perfect rotoscope. So this is exactly what we need. Once you have your rotoscope clip, you can always just control D to duplicate it and just hide the rotoscope so that you can get your background back. And this way you now have an isolated layer of just your rotoscope cut out and you have just your normal footage. So for example, if I wanted to place anything behind our subject here. For example, I'll literally just import a little green screen clip. Let's also just throw a little key light effect onto this green screen clip so we can really see the background. And there you go, easy as that. We can now have any kind of clip behind our subject. And I made a whole video talking about a lot of different variations you could do, um, placing different effects or overlays using this masking method. All right guys, so I wanna show you the main actual ghost trail part of this tutorial in Adobe Premiere, just to show you that once you have this masked isolation part done where you have where you have your mask layer and then your normal layer here, you can really do this with any software. Usually I would use a dynamic link with Adobe Premiere and After Effects, but because we're working in the beta version of After Effects here, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just render out these two layers here so let's go ahead and start with this top one hide the other two file export 
add to render queue to export it out with this transparent background all you need to do is click this little output module here change it to quicktime and then change the channels from rgb to rgb plus alpha and that's all you really need to do go ahead and name it i've already done it here i'll just do it as an example click render should take a couple of seconds and then just pop back into the composition show your normal footage clip here file export add to render queue and we can keep this one as an ABI and just click render. All right, so popping into Adobe Premiere, and again, if you guys use Sony Vegas, Final Cut, whatever it is, if you have Echo, if you have Mask, and you have these two clips set up, you'll be able to do this effect. So import in your isolated clip that we rotoscoped within After Effects or that you masked out, and then bring in underneath that the background footage so that it looks normal. All right, guys, so let's show you how to set up the ghost trail effect, and then we'll go through um, some things that you can do to customize this, add on to it. So search for an echo effect, uh, whatever software you're using, maybe it's called a trails effect. So before we apply that, I want to duplicate this isolated top clip here. So I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard, and while holding down alt, I'm just going to click and drag down. So now I have an isolated layer on the very top. I have an isolated layer in the middle. And then at the bottom, I have my normal footage. Now on this middle isolated clip, I'm gonna apply my echo effect, just like that. And now if you press play, you'll be able to see what's going on. And we can't really see it. You can kind of see it peeking out from there, but let's change the settings to fix this up. So in your effect controls for your middle isolated clip here, let's bump up the number of echoes. And this is dependent on what you really want it to look like. I'm just gonna put it up to like maybe 10 and it's very bright. So let's change this echo operator from add to composite in back. Uh, maybe you wanna try some of these other ones like screen, blend, etc. But if you don't want all that bright craziness, go with composite in front or composite in back. So let's go with composite and back for now. And it looks pretty rough because again, this was a very difficult clip to mask and rotoscope out. So there's a little bit of a line here. I could go back, I could clean it all up, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and look up a little blurring effect. So we're gonna use a camera blur. So now this is looking a lot more smooth with the way it transitions. And you can experiment with that. Maybe you don't want it on five, maybe you want it on like two, three. So now we have our smooth little trail. A lot of how this is going to look is dependent on your clip. If you're Subject is completely standing still and there's not a lot of room for the echo to really do its thing then you're not going to get a great result um, if there's a lot more motion in the clip or there's a lot more swaying really see that echo effect and get a good idea of what's going on another thing that you could do is you can tweak this echo time but only do it very slightly because you see if I put it like crazy it's just gonna skip through the entire video but maybe you want to put it back a tiny bit. Maybe you wanna try and accelerate it a tiny bit. You guys can experiment with how that looks, but essentially that's the bare bones way to create this little ghost trail. Pretty easy, just a couple of steps, changing around some things. Now at this point, you guys are free to customize this however you would like. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I did earlier here, just to finish off the tutorial. Because you have all these masked layers, you have a lot to really work with. This first example, I just kind of changed the echo time. To, instead of negative 0.03, I made it 0 0.017. So a little bit ahead and it kind of transitioned into the next part here so that's one little variation variation number two uh, this is exactly what i showed you the only difference is i applied a little flicker plugin onto here so this is the sapphire flicker which i've talked about in countless videos but if you guys don't have the sapphire pack you guys can use the max novak flicker from my effects pack 2.0 if you have that if not link down in the description because i also used a lot of the inverts from my preset packs so if you're interested in the preset packs that i've created there's a link to my website below where you can check it out but either way let's just apply the little sapphire flicker onto here and you can keep it subtle at that point too or if you want you can go into those effect controls i bumped it up to one just so you could really see it go to work like that when we start getting into the crazier variations here what i did was i grabbed another isolated clip so i took this middle in between that we've been tossing all these effects onto i held down alt and i put this above our top little um, normal isolated. First off, it looks pretty gross right now. Let's go to the effect controls. Let's change the echo from composite in back to composite in front so that we can actually get a good idea of what's going on here. And the flicker is on this as well. So let's just lower the flicker. Let's maybe put the top flicker on 0.5. Five. Now with this top clip here, you can do a bunch of different things. You can change around the echo so that you have two different echoes. Uh, one thing I did was I went to the opacity of this clip and the effect controls, and I went and just put this at zero to start so it's kind of normal. Keyframed it at our starting position here, dragged a bit, and then I slowly started bumping this up. So 
you start at zero and you kind of transition into this craziness going on. Now we get into the even crazier parts. We added in a little invert here. So this is a preset invert from my effects pack, like I mentioned, again, link down below if you are interested. So let's just hold down Alt and we have the exact same composition here. The only difference is let's select this top clip and let's apply one of the inverts from my preset pack. So I use the invert red Luma 2. And as you see, you start normal and you're going to kind of fade into the invert, which is pretty cool. The main reason it's fading in is, is again, because we added that little opacity keyframe. I talked about this recently at the end of my last Premiere Pro tutorial where we made these RGB invert effects. If you actually have the Red Giant Universe pack, they have this VHS plugin and you don't need the plugin. You guys can always do this with just a normal little overlay VHS clip. Again, on my website, there's a 100% free VHS pack, which you can pick up if you don't have the plugin. Hold down Alt and duplicate this one more time. As you can see the last duplication, let's go to that last duplication here. And we're just going to turn off every single effect that we did on here. We just want it to be a clean clip. Now we can place our uni universe VHS or if again, you don't have the plugin, you just place the overlaid clip over top. You don't have to duplicate like I'm doing now. And we can change around the texture that we want. So pay attention to how this universe VHS affecting the subject and let's change around the settings. So maybe you want to try clean VHS. Maybe you want to try saturation boost. Once you're ready to apply it, all you need to do is change your blending mode. So that's another huge thing you can do going to your opacity here in your effect controls. You'll see your blending mode. This is the same in any different software. After Effects, you can change your blending mode. You can apply all these different things that I've been talking about and try and find something that you really like. There's endless opportunities for what you can do with this. Maybe you want to change around the opacity to kind of blend it better. Here's a completely new one that we just created just by using some of those steps that I just showed you. Hope you guys did enjoy. I hope that this showed you what you can do with the power of masking with that new rotoscope too, which is kind of which is going to be coming to After Effects, as well as I hope it gave you some good insight as to how you can customize and create some really cool looks using different techniques. So leave a like if you did enjoy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.